Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Hey, Thrive Loud listeners, Lou Diamond here. A very special Thrive Loud mini today. At the time that we launched this live, this episode came out on August 22nd. About 160 days ago, in mid-March, around March 15th or 16th, Christian Griffith set forth on a journey to run from New York to San Francisco to support Run to Heal, an incredible organization that is helping to recognize and bring awareness to sexual child abuse across the country. Back in uh, last January, we actually had Christian as a guest on the show, and he told his entire story and journey, which was so powerful and incredible. What we wanted to do today was do a little outtake from that interview, which we'll provide here. But we also want to make sure that you get a chance to go to the show notes of this episode, and you can still contribute to Christian's cause, Run to Heal, and make a contribution to help this incredible cause to help so many people that are affected by something that is terrible that really has harmed so many people out there. You'll learn about some of the stats that Christian provides in this outtake, and maybe more importantly, hopefully this message will truly connect with you. So as Christian actually touches the Pacific Ocean sometime today on August 22nd, to give you the stats, he ran about 114 days out of the last 160 days. That's averaging just about a marathon a day over this 23-week period. So congrats, Christian, on this incredible cause and raising all the money that you have. And to the Thrive Loud fans and listeners out there, contribute and also enjoy this brief outtake with my earlier conversation with Christian Griffith. Who did you seek to go to to help fix you on the inside? Who helped, how did you work to improve a lot of that communication and the issues that you had from, from a lot of years of abuse? What did you do? So I, had, uh, I did this event in Australia called the Survival Run Australia. It was an um, 80-kilometer race, number of challenges, all through the outback of, of, um, of Queensland in Australia. And um, very, very challenging race, only 6% finish rate. Um, I met this amazing guy there who yeah. had an organization called Paddle Against Child Abuse, or PACA. And, you know, he had this huge smile. He was just, you know, he had been, uh, I don't know, men's GQ, something, something, cover of a magazine in Australia. He was just this awesome guy with this really negative past. And for some reason, I really connected with him. And I was a sponsored, sponsored amateur skateboarder as a kid. He was a skateboarder as a kid. He had a bunch of skateboard tattoos. So long story short, we connected. And uh, I learned that he had suffered a, a bunch of abuse as a kid. And we just really hit it off. And for whatever reason, we spent a lot of time talking. And he shared his story with me and I listened, but I didn't share mine because I was not in a place in my life where I was willing to talk about that yet. I remember I had packaged it up, put it away, and I was functioning great. Um, but there was something about that interaction that we had. And when I was flying back to Los Angeles from Australia, I, uh, I just I fell apart. I don't know why, but all of this stuff started flooding out of me. I uh, then started communicating with Damien once I got uh, on the ground in L.A. and I could have Wi-Fi. And from L.A. to Atlanta – I told my entire story to this guy and it was like lifting a hundred pound weight off of me. Wow. And it was at that moment that I realized that I needed to deal with this or my life was just going to continue to spiral down. Right. Um, and how old were you at, at this point in time when, when this happened, when you had this conversation back? From, this was uh, only three years yeah. ago. Okay. This so was, really recent. Okay. Oh. So really recent and, and you've been, and by the way, thank you for sharing all this. This is, this is powerful and important stuff. And, and it takes incredible courage to, you know, to do this, to recognize this. And, and I'm, I'm glad to hear, I'm talking to you today because you know that that, that relief must have been tremendous. It also has probably helped to spurn so much ways of channeling to what you're doing into, into positive activities. And, um, Talk about, I guess, from that point on, how you started to channel these efforts into, hey, now I'm going to support these causes and go from, you know, being a participant, but also being a leader in this cause. 
Well, everything happens for a reason, right? And sure, I've, I've done over a hundred ultra marathons. I've done tremendous amount of events. And so I, I had this endurance background and now here I am in a stage of my life where I wanted to start turning my life around and I wanted to start doing really good for people. And first came the, the whole idea of admitting it. Not only did I have to admit to myself what had happened to me and all of the behaviors that I have developed because of what had happened to me and because I wasn't willing to face it, I first had to come out and face it. But that's only step one. Step two was, okay, cool. Now you've admitted it. Now you got to walk through the fire. You got to put in the work. And for me, that's therapy, right? So then what I learned through therapy was that one great way for me to heal would be to get this message out and talk to other people. Because Lou, here's what I found out, man. When I admitted this, when I started talking about what had happened to me, I wrote a uh, um, uh, a post about it on my site, Live for a Living, mm-hmm. and I posted that to Facebook. And when I posted that to Facebook, I sat back and I thought to myself, oh my God, what did you just do? But I just <laughs> couldn't take it anymore. I had to admit it. I got 157, within 24 hours, 157 personal messages back to me of people that have been through much of the same thing. At all different levels, either they're willing to just say, hey, I get it. Don't worry, you're not alone. To people who I was the catalyst for them spilling their entire story and everything in between. And it was amazing. And at that point, I realized that there's an army of us out there. When you go to the Run to Heal website, you'll see the statistic. But one in three girls and one in six boys is sexually abused before the age of 18. That's Mm -hmm. a huge number. When you're sitting in a group of people, you can pretty much guess that there's a handful of people in there who have been through it. And But it's such a taboo subject. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's like the biggest downer in the world. Abusing kids, sexually abusing kids. It's like it's it's a horrible conversation. So one thing that I realized was that I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid of the conversation. I'm not afraid of admitting what happened to me. I'm not afraid of walking through the fire to heal. And that's what it took. It took walking through the fire, doing what it took through therapy to start to heal these behaviors. So now I want to go out there and talk to more people that this has happened to. And that's not going to be hard. Running across the country and having this desire to speak to people who have been abused, there's there's an army of us out there. They're all over the place. And I can't wait to get out there, tell people that, hey, it's okay that it happened to you. Yes, some of the behaviors that you developed have developed because of this is what happened to you. And let's walk through the fire. Let's get some treatment. It's the only way out. And I'm here by your side. I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com.